Hey there, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Brendan and today I'm going to be talking to you about my chronic pelvic pain syndrome journey. And the purpose of this video, the reason I'm making this video is because I get a lot of messages on Instagram. I get a lot of questions that come through to me on the videos that I've made referencing chronic pelvic pain and I'm aware that there's a lot of people out there that need help. I'm pain free in terms of my chronic pelvic pain. However, there are elements that I'll discuss with you in this video. It's not been a linear path to success by any stretch of the imagination and the reason I'm making this video is because there's so many men out there suffering with this pain. It's debilitating, It's it, it impacts families, it creates huge amounts of confidence issues, social anxiety, and it can make people feel, feel very lonely. And equally, when I was in my sort of early phases of dealing with chronic pelvic pain, I noticed that there wasn't any really like constructive support out there for men suffering with chronic pelvic pain. There were some videos on YouTube that were very helpful. I know that there's a, a couple of uh, people who've turned the, the chronic pelvic pain into a business, which I, I have no idea how, how that works. Um, I've not experienced any of that. I've not worked with any of those people. I've just come across what their take on things is. My take on things is different. And so I'm just putting this out there for people who want some context on on how I managed to figure this out for myself and yeah kind of where it all started and how it all started because I think when you know what triggers these issues you're in a better place to deal with them or maybe put in some roadblocks so that you don't ever have those situations arise yet again in your life okay so to kind of kick things off you know when when this all started for me it was 2019, coming to the end of quite a stressful year in my life. I'd recently le left a commercial space of training people in a gym. I was a personal trainer and I left in the middle of 2019, left a commercial job. I was working quite well. I was well paid. It wasn't amazing, but it wasn't like terrible money. And I took all my clients with me and I left and I started up on my own. I then realized how little I knew about running a business and how much I needed to learn. That was quite a stressful period of my life. There was a lot of family stuff going on at the time. Uh, my mom was relocating from a different country to the UK and my 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 father had just come over to the UK and he was living on his own and she was about to make the transition and come over and that process for for our family has been an ongoing process but it's it was quite lengthy and it was quite stressful for everybody involved that was a moment when you know I was needed by my family but I also needed to carry on with my life and build my business there was a lot of like toing and froing i traveled quite a lot when i probably shouldn't have shouldn't have done that um, financially it didn't make sense but it, it made sense on a on a family level and so there was a lot of stress there was a lot of anxiety around that and then you know we had the the looming pandemic of 2020 which was you know, a lot of people were tense. A lot of people were worried. A lot of people didn't really know what was going on. And I was under a lot of pressure. Um, and I didn't really realize how much pressure I'd put myself under. And I remember I was at a point of time in my relationship with my my wife, uh, my now wife, where, you know, we, we'd been dating for a long time. She has two lovely children and we'd been um, seeing each other, but it was starting to get to the point where I felt like I needed to make a decision on, you know, how long we were going to stick this out. Was I going to commit to being with her for a, a long time and, you know, take the next step or was I going to break away? And that was a question that came into my head. Um, and then we went into lockdown. And just before we went into lockdown, I developed pain in my pelvic region. I developed a chronic pelvic pain. What the doctors thought at the time was prostatitis. I vividly remember going into my doctor's surgery after doing a really strenuous workout in the gym the previous day and thereafter finding blood in my sperm and I was in absolute agony. My, my whole 
pelvic region just felt like someone was ripping my testicles off my body and I was just in in excruciating amounts of pain I, I can't even begin to describe it if you've been there with chronic pelvic pain you'll know what this was like I didn't tell my girlfriend at the time I you know my wife I didn't tell her that I'd found blood in my sperm I just kept that to myself and the doctor had said look you know let's check out your meat and veg let's make sure everything's all right and he had a look down there and he just said look you, it looks like you've got an inflammation in the epididymis or epididymitis I think it was called he said just take these painkillers um, and take these antibiotics and in the, in the next week or so it'll should clear up three days later I could barely walk um, I was walking up the road to get something to eat and I was just I just couldn't I couldn't do it one foot after the other it was like it was like someone had messed up my suspension and my pelvic bones were just slamming into my into themselves and my muscles in my pelvic floor were just in constant spasm. And it just felt like someone was pressing really hard in there um, with a golf ball shoved in my butt. And I was just like, this is just untenable. I can't carry on like this. So I phoned the doctor and I said, look, this is really not well. Come in and see me again. So I went in and he, he chatted to me a little bit longer. He said, look, stop training, stop running, stop doing everything. I said, look, I haven't even been able to train and lift a single dumbbell. Um, and I haven't been able to train with my clients because I've been lying in bed. You know, so I'd canceled all my sessions with my clients. And I was just like, I I'm literally, I'm like, I can't deliver sessions. I'm going to lose money and I can't work. I can't train. There's no, there's no outlet for me to, um, to keep things stable in my life. And he said, look, you know, take some time off the gym and rest. And, you know, if you've got private insurance, maybe some income protection, you can take a month where you just relax a little bit and then let's bring the infection down with the antibiotics. And I said, well, how do you know I've actually got an infection? And he said, look, I don't know that because, you know, they didn't do the blood work at that point. Um, he said, but I'm just going by my, my guess here. Don't have any sex, don't have any, don't masturbate or anything like that. Just chill. And I was like, well, this is just ridiculous. I've been in so much freedom in my life with everything to to being told I can't even walk because I'm just going to exacerbate symptoms and stuff. Long story short, on that front, he said, look, take these extra strong antibiotics and if there is still pain on friday that was on like the tuesday um, just go to the hospital and admit yourself and i was like okay fantastic now over here in the uk we have the nhs um, in america and other places in the world it varies on your health system but in the uk if you're with the nhs you have a free doctor's appointment you get to go to hospital for free. I call it free. It's not really free. You pay for it in your taxes every year. I saw a urologist. They uh, did a prostate exam. They did some blood work. There was no infection. I was literally bawling my eyes out in front of the nurse. And I said, look, I, I just cannot take, I, I've never been in this much pain in my life. I can't take this. Can you explain to me how this goes away? And they put me back onto the original um, antibiotics and they gave me a, a series of of pills um, which I'll pop up on screen for you now so cocodamol naproxen omeprazole uh, ciprofloxin and pams pam pamsvax which was like a muscle relaxant so I had to bounce off the naproxen and the cocodamol and you know Given my history, I mean, this was bizarre. I'd, I'd never been so desperate in my entire life. I was willing to just shove pills down my throat in the hope that they would make a difference. And no, nothing changed. You know, I took the antibiotics for a period of time, a long period of time, and that didn't help. I took the painkillers. The naproxen would work for about two hours and that would be it. And then the cocodamol would give me relief, but it made me incredibly constipated, which if you've had chronic pelvic pain, you'll know that constipation and pelvic pain don't really mix very well um, because you don't want to upset the, the rhythm of the pelvic floor. I went back to the hospital a week later and I said, look, whatever you've given me is not working. I'm, I'm even worse than I was before. Help me. Just help me. Just do whatever. Like, is it pudendal neuralgia? I've been on, I've read um, by that point in this journey, by the way, I'd already read A Headache in the Pelvis, which was a great book. It was really informative. I, it gave me a lot of context and it started to 
sort of pick at the question in my mind like was this actually a an infection or was this actually something to do with my mechanics my body my the way my pelvic floor was functioning i started asking these questions to the doctors and they didn't have answers for me so i just decided to find my own way i guess i carried on taking the pills that they kept giving me and i went to a coffee morning that I ran for my client base to try and get them back together because it had been a while since I'd actually um, seen very many people and it was the lowest point it was probably one of the lowest points in my life I've had a few low points in my life but this was definitely one of them I, I was pale I, I didn't look well I was very I was very upset I was bordering on tears every time I moved and I saw a friend of mine who said look man um, you look terrible. Are you okay? I said, no, I'm not all right. Hardly anyone came to the actual morning itself. The few people that did were, I was very thankful for. And they could sense something was really wrong with me. And at that point, I was considering just quitting my job altogether and just trying to find something work-wise that I could manage with and just get paid a salary. I didn't have to worry. So, you know, this chronic pelvic pain is no joke. I mean, it, it can destroy your life in you know that was a four week stretch where i'd i'd gone from having a a really good positive outlook on life to having a very very negative one some of that was down to the medication the medication really made me feel very very uncontrollably um sort of uh, what's the word i'm looking for um almost catastrophic like i was catastrophizing a lot of things potential suicide thoughts all that kind of stuff came through my mind at one point in that process of figuring things out we were thrown into a, a lockdown and i was still managing to drive around and you know drop food off to people in my family and, and friends and i actually moved in temporarily with my girlfriend who is now my wife to live with her because we were going into a situation that no one had ever been in before and we weren't allowed out. And I was doing all the running around, all the shopping, everything. Um, so although I was in a lot of pain, I was still managing to force myself to do things that normal people would do. In this case, it was me going, doing the shopping and then coming home and trying to rest as much as possible. And at that point, I found a physiotherapist in uh, the UK and I did some online physio therapy sessions. He was very helpful. He gave me um, a sort of, he went through a whole bunch of questions and uh, gave me an online virtual program to follow. And I followed that program and the pain subsided quite substantially from about 100% all the time to about sort of 60 to 80% provided I did all the stretches and all the exercises every single day at least four times a day. So what I would find myself doing is sitting in a position for a particular period of time, then getting up and stretching, and then sitting in a position for a particular period of time, and then getting up and stretching. And I just realized that that was not going to sustain me for the rest of my life. Like, I, I couldn't figure out how to make that happen. Some days were better than others, and I had through the, the the friend that I met at the coffee morning, I had reached out to someone who was providing CBD oil with THC. So not the over-the-counter stuff that you can get in the UK. This was very much not that. I ended up being sort of a mildly high most of the day because of that fact. I was taking CBD oil to take away the pain, which worked well along with the stretching. I stopped all the medication that the doctors gave me and I simply just focused on uh, really kind of improving my mindfulness time, my meditation time, my relaxation time, taking some of the stress out of my life as much as I could, right? And that was all the prescriptions I could see was like, bring yourself into more awareness and focus on being more calm and practice breathing techniques and stretch your body out, stretch out your pelvis, stretch out your hips. I realized that actually I was going to have to live with this condition for the rest of my life. And then I started to become a little bit more upbeat. I started to just figure out that, hey, I had a tolerance level of pain and I would just have to push through it. And at that point, I was interviewed on a podcast, which I don't think exists anymore. The The Facebook group that I was in for chronic pelvic pain shut down because it was, there were just too, it was just too much, um, too many men struggling with no answers. 
I started looking around and I was like, look, I've got these stretches, but I can't just keep doing stretches. And so I'm doing the stretches and then I'm trying to train myself in the gym and I'm lifting weights again, but still doesn't feel quite right. Decided that I would start to look elsewhere. And this place that I'd been to many times before kept popping up in my mind, which was functional patterns, functional patterns, functional patterns. And I'd used a lot of functional patterns training concepts with clients before on a more of a conditioning basis because it was truly a functional system of training. But I'd never really thought that their 10-week online course could give me some insight into how my body was responding to movement. I thought, well, you know, I've managed to stabilize my finances. I've I've managed to find a level of operation because of the stretching and and the uh, CBD oil where I'm I'm actually starting to build up my business, you know, it's mostly online, but that's fine. I had financial stability coming back because I'd pulled myself out of chronic pain at 100% and I had kind of brought myself into this 60% realm where, you know, by the end of the day, my pelvis was killing me, but in the morning and during the middle of the day, it was okay and I could manage. And I felt a lot better about myself and I felt a lot more positive about things. It helped that we'd had that break where everyone was in the same situation. It was a new world for everybody. And I kind of found my place quite well. So I bought the 10 week online course from Functional Patterns and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do my training for running outside of Functional Patterns because I don't accept personally that someone could sit there and tell me that I'm never going to run again. I don't accept on a deep fundamental level that someone in my situation with my history, okay, um, if you don't know my history by now, go back and look on my channel or somewhere else on my website maybe about, you know, my story and, and where I come from with weight loss. And, you know, exercise for me is a big control measure in my life. It's not a healthy thing necessarily, but it's not a bad thing either. It was at the time, which we'll cover in, in just a sec. Essentially, I, I said to myself, right, what was the thing that created the problem? in the first place. And so I was like, well, Brendan, you were you were training really hard towards the end of 2019 and in the beginning of 2020. I was doing a fitness test every week. I was lifting very heavy weight and I I sort of went back over that and I was like, okay, so this is where I'm at now. I'm 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 in chronic pain and that's where I was and I wasn't in pain, but my body felt really like I was super fit. I was running loads, I was training loads, but I was not I was not aware of my positions in space. I was not aware of my mechanics when I was doing it. I was just pushing my body. So maybe that was the problem. Maybe there was an issue there. And then I started reading into the functional patterns concepts of posture and pain-related posture and fascia. It was a really interesting video, which I will link here for you down in the comments or down, down below, of a lady giving a speech, I can't remember her name now, but she gives a speech or a lecture about fascia and how if you were to imagine wearing a Spider-Man suit and being tight in one area can affect other areas of the body. And I was like, well, you know what? What's really interesting, Brennan, is that you've always had a rounded back. And then I was like, well, why did I develop a rounded posture? I was like, well, I used to play golf really like loads all the time. Um, so maybe that's got something to do with it. And then I thought, well, you had a lot of trauma in your in your past. Like I was bullied as a kid. I broke my my coccyx when I was like twelve years old or something like that. I smashed it on the floor. And what is the relationship between my posture, my my confidence, my body language, and also the the trauma that's happened to my body over the years? You know, when I was overweight i had shingles what are all these things how do they all link to this because the workout wasn't the problem the workout was the straw that broke the camel's back what else was loaded up there what other things could contribute and it came back to the one thing that i had never addressed properly which was my posture my posture is not very good i've got uh, quite a kyphotic spine or hyperkyphosis in my spine and it's always been something that i'm very conscious about so that's why I went down the functional patterns route with my training and I pushed myself through the 10-week the course very quickly and I did it whilst I was trying to run and do other things and, and I got injured again. This time it was my right calf that, that hurt and I was just like, damn, this, 
this rabbit hole is never ending. I'm now in pain in my pelvis. I've got a problem with my calf muscle. I'm going to reach out to a functional patterns practitioner to see, you know, what what I'm missing. What am I missing here? And we went through a consultation with an ace whose name is an ace. There's actually a video on my channel as well where I interview him um, and I talk about, you know, what what it meant to become pain free working with him and how functional patterns can help people. So I highly recommend you check that out. We worked together f- on and off for about a year and a half. And during that time, I made some some serious breakthroughs in my personal journey Uh, with my posture with my mechanics and it turned out that a lot of my problems stem from residual patterns of movement within my body so having played golf my entire life my left shoulder tends to be stuck open my rib cage is a little bit shifted and tilted in the wrong direction which created a little bit of a scoliosis in my spine and when I was in chronic pain I was compensating Uh, for the pain but I was playing into those patterns of shifting come combine that with the shingles and all of the other health issues that I'd had in the past that workout that I did was just the final thing that hurt my body and so if you will imagine my pelvis sitting like this my left hip my left pelvis uh, part of my pelvis sits higher than my right side and my left rib cage rotates and shifts um, in the wrong direction as well. So my whole body is contorted when I stand neutral or stand in a neutral position, let alone when I'm trying to lift a heavy weight in the gym. And it came down to this biomechanical spiraling pattern uh, that was really kind of interesting. And I know this might seem like I'm waffling about things that maybe you know you might not quite get or understand at the moment spiraling and fascia and all this kind of stuff it is my job to talk about this kind of thing because i'm a a practitioner myself but i had to learn a lot about my body to overcome the chronic pelvic pain and there are times there are days where it flares a little bit i as i sit here now i can feel you know that i've been sat for a period of time i can feel that I have to be conscious of how my body is positioned because I know that those patterns of compensation, whether they were brought on more by the chronic pain or not, those patterns are are there and they will play out if I let them. And when it comes to functional patterns, I worked with the, I worked with Anais for uh, that period of time. When I stopped working with him, I really had to pick up any extra slack. I had to think about my movement patterns and what I was training. And a lot of what functional patterns focus on is not actually about stretching and mindfulness or let's say the holistic elements of wellness. It's about the mechanical structure of your body and getting you to stretch your body in ways that are congruent with your gait cycle, with the way that we are born and evolved to be as humans. And I think that's a really important thing that a lot of people tend to overlook in the medical world, um, particularly when it comes to dealing with chronic pain and chronic issues. To give you kind of an understanding of, of what sorts of things I've been doing, it's essentially using a pulley system Uh, using myofascial release, which is foam rolling techniques, using standing and breathing postural cues to help improve my, my body's mechanics. There's quite a lot of things that I've explored over the last three years. But from January in 2020, when this all started, to January in 2023, like I'm a different human being, mentally, physically, And it's probably mainly because I didn't give up on myself. I made sure that whatever I did, I stayed true with the intention of figuring out the puzzle that is my life. There are things that will help. And these are the things that I'm going to kind of cover with you now. Uh, The main thing that helped me was looking at the information that's around about chronic pelvic pain and then 
looking back over my history and really trying to understand what it is that um, maybe sets me off when it comes to chronic pelvic pain. The other thing that uh, I'd like for you to, to understand or to, to know is that I had uh, issues or I have had issues since the chronic pelvic pain and since um, not being very well in 2022, 21, 22, issues with blood pressure. So the things to look into are like, what is your standing posture like? What is your blood pressure? How healthy are your kidneys? Because your kidneys are linked to your prostate and your urology and your bladder. How how is your prostate PSA reading? Like what is your PSA reading? That is a very good thing to go and test because there are many avenues into chronic pelvic pain. Some people will genuinely have a prostate infection. Some people will genuinely have pudendal neuralgia. Some people will genuinely have some form of issue with the, 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 the prostate or maybe the bladder or maybe some damage to the kidneys. There will be those people, but there are a lot of men who are suffering because their biomechanical predisposition is forcing pressure on the prostate. And this is how I've managed to, to think of it. If your pelvis and your pelvic floor muscles sit here and your bones sit either side, and then you have your prostate sitting in the middle of that, and then your bladder sitting on top of that. Well, if those pelvic muscles are being pulled in in really random directions because the bones are all out of alignment and the prostate is only that far away from the, the muscle, you're going to have an issue with the pelvic floor. You're going to have an issue with that prostate becoming aggravated. And so the mimicking of this uh, issue and this syndrome is quite scary. Internal massage can be really therapeutic. I've experimented with internal massage with prostate milking. I've experimented with breathing techniques to try and help expand and relax that region. They help, but ultimately what has happened and what has helped me the most was developing a better muscular skeletal system that works. And by doing that and getting my upper body and my lower body stronger in a relative capacity to how my body should be improving how my core functions, not my core training, not training the core in a particular way, how my core works with all the other um, muscles of the body, how my glutes work. Um, that sort of intricacy and that detail is the precision that will be needed to overcome this long term and be able to sit in a position like this for 33 minutes or whatever this video's length will be and talk without feeling like, I have to go to the toilet or I have to get up and stretch. I'm quite comfortable as I am here. I'm very relaxed as I'm talking. And that's because for the most part, I've understood my body better and I've learned a lot along the way. Now, this might not be everyone's cup of tea. This might not be for everybody in terms of my advice. I completely understand how overwhelming it is to sit there and listen to someone who's had success and managed to come out of pain but like I said, if your PSA reading is good, your kidney function is fine, and your, but your posture isn't good, your diet's not good, but if your sexual behavior is um, out of control, if you can't control your urges, if you, if you find yourself where you're, you're stressed a lot, if you find yourself holding on to anxiety, to, to pressure, to stress, these are all signs that something internal is going on. And the way I liken this is, if your, if your body is the most perfect, pristine system that we have, the number one thing that your body will want more than anything else is some equilibrium, some balance, some homeostasis, where it doesn't have to work too hard to do what it needs to do every single day. And when you're in chronic pain, or if you've got joints and bones that are shifted all around because your muscles aren't working very well, or your muscles are in spasm, then your whole central nervous system starts to take strain. The more I get stronger in my biomechanics, 
the better I am at dealing with the stresses that come my way. I still have issues. I still have problems. I still, like the rest of us, we still, I still worry about money. I still worry about all sorts of things. I still do stupid things all the time, right? I'm not immune. I'm not perfect. The stronger my body gets, the better my body is at dealing with these things. And as of today, I can run five kilometers without any pain. I can train every single day if I want to in the gym, lifting weights again. I can do the things that I want to do because I've spent the time over the last three years kind of learning this process. Now, I'm not saying it's going to take you three years. I'm not going to say it's going to happen overnight either. I'm not saying it's going to take you 12 years, but I've met people, I've met men who've been suffering with this for 10 years, 12 years, 13 years. And some of the simplest release work on their hips or myofascial release or patterning work with a cable stack has pulled them out of it. Like, you know, I had a, a chap recently who'd been in chronic pain for a long time, had a lot of issues with his gut health, had a lot of stress and anxiety in his life. And by just giving him some simple exercises, he managed to come away from the pain completely. He still has issues. He still has the stress. He's still learning how to cope with the stress. But that's my take on it. It's a behavioral mechanism that's been induced in a lot of men because of an external factor that's come in at some point. I guess to kind of wrap things up, I just wanted to share that with you guys today because I think it provides a little bit more context. Like I said, that that checklist should be there. You should get your blood work done. You should get your, your, prost, your PSA levels checked. You should get your prostate checked. You should check in on kidney function. But at the same time, you can't just look internally. You need to look more to the externals. What does your body look like? How tall do you stand? How compressed is your spine? Do you have a scoliosis? Do you have one hip that's higher than the other? Do you have one shoulder that's out of place? Do you rotate one way better than you rotate the other? Can you walk without pain? Can you run without pain? Those are the sorts of questions that I would ask to people because I think it's relevant and I think it helps. You know, I have a lot of knowledge about this in terms of the prostate health, the, the kidneys and, and what I've learned along the way of managing myself. And I'm, I'm willing to share that information for people. But one thing I will say, and, and I'll say this to sort of round things up, if you're not serious about helping yourself, if you want someone to hand you an answer, because I do get this a lot, in, in the men that I speak to, there's a lot of men looking for someone to save them. That's not the case. You, you cannot be saved by someone else. This is not one of those things that you're just going to get given on a plate and told, here you go, here's a tablet, go away and uh, you'll be fine tomorrow. It just doesn't work like that. And there's absolutely no way that the best coach in the world will ever be able to pull you out of your hole because you're the one that's in the hole. You're the one that has to be coached how to get out of that hole. It's not about quick fix solutions, things like that. And I think that should cover quite a lot of bases. If you're reaching out for help, that's fine. Reach out for help. But if you're reaching out because you, you're hoping for some kind of miracle, um, there is no miracle. There is no amazing cure. However, there is good intentional work towards changing behaviors in your life that all impact on how your body is as a structure, as a, as a human being. Your mind and your body, they're not just separate entities. Your brain is linked to every muscle, to every part of your body, to your fingers, to your toes. And if there's something out of balance in your body, there's something that's going to be happening up here and there's going to be something showing on the physical side of it. Hopefully that's been helpful, guys. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say down below in the comments. I'd love to know your thoughts on your journeys. Like, you know, what is it? Is there anything I've missed? Is there any? Is there anything else out there that can um, come to the same conclusions that I have with chronic pelvic pain? I'd love to hear them. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you have a great day wherever you are. And I hope that this gives you some, some hope in understanding that things improve when you put the time in. My body shape has changed so much in the last three years just from applying functional patterns principles and I'm 
eternally grateful for the knowledge that I've been given and earned and paid for because the courses that they they run aren't always the cheapest and working with a practitioner full time I guarantee is not the cheapest thing in the world but hell if it saves my life and if it stops me from wanting to kill myself if it stops me from losing my entire life and my family I'm going to do it I'm going to find a way to make it happen and that's the kind of attitude that's going to really help at the end of the day because Painkillers are one thing, mechanics is another, but having the attitude that you're not going to give up, that's the biggest thing you can do. All right, have a great day, guys. Catch you in the comments section or possibly in another video if you want to hear more about this. I'll speak to you soon. Stay strong and keep moving.